is more than likely Patreon. That way you'll have something to go back and forth to. I just got this. I just took the wrapper off. Just got this today. This is the oversized Rider weight. Let's see what it looks like. So I'm going to teach from this one. Or like I said, if you have a deck that you'd rather me use, like if you have one that you have and I have and you would rather learn from that one, because it's the one you use all the time, then we'll learn from that one. Got a little history into Pamela Coleman Smith, who drew, who was the artist of the Rider Waite. Every deck I have is based on the Rider Waite system as in these cards and what have you so they're very big very big so we'll learn from these um but like i said i'm going to do patreon more than likely and we'll do like the tier thing like if you want to pledge a dollar you can get access to this and so forth and so forth and so forth we'll do I'll do some like special readings that I won't do for YouTube. I'll put them on there. The Zodiac readings, I will do those on there. You can ignore them if you don't want to watch them. The Tarot lessons, of course, will be on there. Um, spread lessons are on there. I will try to do a weekly live stream over there as well. And a card of the day. So we'll just pull a card and give a message for the day. So that's what it looks like over there right now. When it comes to the lessons themselves, I am not big, so this is just a disclaimer in case this is not for you. I'm not big on symbolism. So there are symbols in this card, I am sure. Like for instance, the eternity symbol is a symbol for something else. So I'm not gonna go into symbolism. I'm gonna go into basics. This is the magician. It means skill. So I'm going to do that type of thing. I'm going to stick to the tradition, to the Rider weight definition. And then later on in the lessons, we will teach you how to come up with your own interpretation, not change the interpretation of the card, but how to develop your own connection to the card to where when you see it, it could also mean this to you. If that was confusing, that's okay. We'll make it plain in the class. For example, when you see three of wands, means waiting. Waiting on materialization. We had an idea. Here comes that idea. Now it's off the ground. We just need it to be open. So when you see that, you could also say it's whatever it's going to be in relation to your question. So maybe it's not waiting on the materialization. Maybe it is an ending to something. So like I said, we'll make that plain in the class. We will go card by card. So I'll do one card, one video, and we'll go through the magician, what the magician means. And when you see it in a spread, when you see it in um, various positions, what it could mean in that position. So we'll, we'll go into not just the magician, but the uses of the magician card and the meanings based upon position. And then we'll go to the high priestess and we'll do the next and the next, but we'll do the same thing we did here, where we'll go into when you see the high priestess in this position, it could mean this. So. We'll do that in one video. So we'll do the magician, the uses of the magician, the examples or the definition of the magician, all that in one video. So that video will probably be along the lines of maybe 15 to 30 minutes of explanation. And then we'll cut that off and then we'll do a separate video for this. That way it's not all, it doesn't become so confusing that you have to think about so many cards at one time. Then, after we do definitions and examples, 
we'll go into card relation. Now this is why I say I'm just going to teach you basics because symbolism, like the pillars, they are symbols. That's not my strong suit. My strong suit is card relation. So when you see the magician and the five of cups together, it means it has, they have separate meanings, but then they have one message when you see them together. So we will go into that. And I'll teach you how to recognize the message once you see it. And we'll go into court cards. Court cards are a whole separate animal because it just is. So we'll do that. And then I will show you spreads. I have created some spreads. I'm doing some spreads actually right now that I am creating. So we will go through the traditional Celtic cross. We'll do the traditional um, past, present, future. That's usually like three cards or nine cards and three in each row. And then we'll do some um, creative spreads to teach you how to do those and to teach you about card placement and card meaning in those placements. So we'll do that. And so I'll make videos for those. If you learn that way, if you want a session, then we can just book and schedule you for a session. That way we can do 30 minutes or an hour of just going through cards, card meetings, whatever it is that you feel as though you want to learn or that you're not comfortable with. Just from the videos, we can set it aside and say, okay, well, let's focus on this together and then we'll get through. Um, if you want a session that way, that way you can ask questions back and forth. Now, you can still ask questions on the videos because Patreon does have a comment section. So you can still ask questions and then I'll still do my best to go back and forth and answer the questions. Now, I've never used Patreon, so I don't know how the, um, the notification system works. Like when I get comments on YouTube, they notify me that someone has left a comment. So I can go, if I'm looking at it in real time, if I have to go back, then it's different because it emails me some of your comments. So it's a whole different thing. So I'm not sure how that works on Patreon, but we shall see. But I'll try to do my best to keep up with that because learning the tarot is easy for some and then seems like an impossible, insurmountable thing for others because um, I was telling another reader this because <clears throat> they said they weren't psychic and i said you do have some sort of psychic ability everybody does you just don't know how to use it like um the way a positive change said this morning you just don't know how to use it so some people look at the car all they see is ink and pictures they don't know that they, they have no connection to the tarot but when i say you don't have to be psychic to read it which means the tarot is a map and in that map, there are placements, there are markers, there are cards, there are, in the, like in the spreads, there are positions. And when you see this marker, or you see this position, and you see this card in that position, it means this. Therefore, you don't have to be connected psychically to the cards. All you need to do is read what that card is in that position, and then you got your meaning. And then you can just put some place them together like a puzzle piece. So you can still do it. You don't have to be psychic. Um, but I will guarantee you, you probably are. You just, like I said, don't know how to use it. And this is a really good tool for unlocking it. Um, now tips and tricks. I don't really know tips and tricks. I have a few that I can just share with you now. We don't have to go Patreon for that one. Um, one was put your deck in the windowsill. Let it soak up the sunlight and the moonlight. That's, you know, old pagan trick. Put it under your pillow and sleep on it and see if the deck communicates with you. Um, I just place it in the bed somewhere. So you can place it at the foot of the bed, under the bed, whatever. I just throw it in there and most of the time kick it off somewhere. But I wake up in the morning, sounds like I had a conversation. I have no idea why it was in the bed. So, you know, you can try those things and see if it helps you or see if it sort of jolts your intuition or do 
just sit around and just, you know, hold them, shuffle them. Just, just spend as much time around them as you can. Pull one card a day and just look at it. You don't have to, you know, connect with it. Just look at it. So there are some, there are some tips and some tricks. And I do have, this is not one, but this is an example. You can use crystals. So you can use amethyst, which is a purple crystal. I think I have, oh, it's way over there. Anyway, it's a purple crystal. Or you can use a white quartz or white crystal. Or you can use a blue one or the lapis lazuli. Those crystals or those stones open up your spirit and make you more receptive to the spiritual world. They don't leave you vulnerable. So you don't have to worry about like being possessed or something like that. Um, what they do is they open up good energy. And so with like with white crystal or the white quartz, it, it is like a conduit. Or you can do a white candle. It's a conduit. So it's, it's like it just heightens your spirit. In the amethyst, it heightens your spirit. It also protects your spirit too. So if you want to like wear amethyst throughout the day, it will protect you from negative energy. Um, the lapis lazuli, which is like a blue stone, it does the same thing. It, it will protect your spirit from outside harm in the outside spirits. So especially if you work in the public, it's a good stone to have. In amethyst and white quartz, they're good stones to have. Um, pink stones or rose quartz, those are, you can use those if you have attachments to them. Like... There is no right or wrong way, but there is a more effective way, I should say it that way, that you can use crystals. Like, for example, like I was saying, the rose quartz is usually used for drawing in romantic attention, some sort of love or some sort of affection. I'll say it's affection, not necessarily romantic, but affection. And so you can use that because it is a positive energy. But... It's not necessarily something that opens your spirit like a white quartz or a lapis lazuli or amethyst. So you can use those to open your spirit. You can use the rose quartz or a pink crystal to make you more receptive or bring energy your way. Um, black stones, so like onyx or obsidian, those are different. Those are like the heavy hitter when it comes to stones because they draw in energy and then push out energy. So the rose quartz just opens you up to be receptive. So you still have to do some receiving. The black stones, like the onyx or obsidian, draw in the energy, it's just by itself. So you don't have to really do anything like black candles. They draw in a negative energy and then they push out a positive energy. Now they don't draw in a negative energy <clears throat> for you to have. They draw it in to cleanse it and then push out a positive. So it's not something that is going to be drawn to you and you're going to hold on to it and you're going to feel sluggish. or It's not something that it's trying to give you. It just draws it in, purifies it, pushes it back out. So it's not something that you're going to use for your um, divination, which is divine information, if you ever hear that word. It's not something you normally use for it. It's more something you use to banish bad energy. So if you are in the house, for instance, and there is unrest or there is no peace or something like that, try the white candle first because it opens up for the easy spirits to come in. Or if it's not working and you still feel unrest, try black. Try the black candle or black um, stones. They draw in the negative energy and push out the positive. So those those are really, like I said, those are heavy to use because you have to be prepared for the negative energy to be sucked in. But like I said, it's not negative energy that's going to sit on you. It's going to be pushed back out as positive, but there is a process first. Um, red energies or red stones like um, rubies or red moonstones even, but the red stones are more for 
heightened energy. So if you are sluggish, if you feel tired, a red stone will help. Um, charging stones and washing stones and dedicating stones and candles and all that. I can put that over on the Patreon because now we've gotten to a whole other thing here. <laughs> but that, that will help you. That is some tips and the tricks for your, um, for your tarot. White candles, white stones, purple stones, blue stones. Blue is also a color of intuition, so it heightens your intuition. So, listen to me teaching already right here. <laughs> so, that is where we are right now. We will do one card at a time. There are 78, so that is 78 videos, so be prepared. Um, there is not going to be like one a day. I'm thinking not one a month because that's ridiculous, but there will be at least one every other day. That way you can do, because I don't want you to get the feeling you're falling behind. Even though the videos are there and you can watch them at your leisure, I still don't want you to feel as though, okay, I just started the magician card and there are three other videos waiting. I feel behind. You know, so I don't I don't want you to get that feeling because I don't want this to be the place you turn to learn and then you become discouraged. So we'll take it slow. There is no rush. There is no hurry. So we will definitely have at least. What are we? August, September, October. So we got five, five months left in the year. Retail-wise, it's already, already fall. There's Halloween candy in the stores. Christmas comes right after that. So, anyway, we'll talk about that. So, by the end of the year, we should be at least halfway through, if not all the way through. But, like I said, I don't want to rush it because I don't want you to feel discouraged or rushed. I want you to be able to look at the magician, practice with the magician, and learn who the magician is backwards and forwards and then we go to the high priestess then we go to the empress then we go to the emperor so i don't want you to feel rushed i don't want you to be discouraged i don't want you to feel like you're falling behind go at your own pace if you're fine with you know 78 videos sitting there and you're just still number one that's cool too like i said they're not going anywhere so go for it um so we'll do meanings first. So meanings will come first. If you know the meanings already, I'm sorry, but we'll have to do the meanings first. Then we will do card relations. So we'll go, when you see page of ones and, and, and the magician together, it means this. We'll do card relations next. Then we will do spreads. And I'll show you the different spreads you can do and the different meanings and all that. Then we will plug cards into those spreads and then show you what they mean when they're in these positions. Then after that, I think we should be close to done, but after that, yes. Yeah, we should be close to done by then. And then if you know something else comes up, we'll just we'll just do that. But that is the update on on the cards and on the tarot class. Now, as far as Patreon goes, like I have to, I have to still set it up and do some things over here. But private readings, email readings, and if you go to where is my oh sweet Jesus. Trying to find my telephone. Anyway, where is it? Anyway, if you go to, I was going to try to show you how to do it. Wait a minute, pause. Okay, so where are we? Can you see that? Anyway, so what we do is we go to YouTube. And I'll do it from a different account. The way I can show you how it's done from the outside. 
So it'll look me first, first thing pops up. So we'll go to subscriptions. Anyway, go to like one of my videos if you have to. And what we're going to do is go to, this is so bright you can't see that. Maybe we can see it better. There you go. Go to my page. Okay. Up here at the top where it says homes, videos, playlists, community, go to community. Over here is where you have all of my communications. Like when I type a post, not a video, a post, it's over here. So go to the communicating or the community tab. And there's the home page. So when you go to my page, this is the home page. Then go to the community tab. Here in the community tab is where you'll find my post. There is a post in here of a reading that I did for Donald Trump and will he be given a chance to make amends? So that's the question. So this is what the email readings will look like if you get an email reading from me. I start, I take a picture of the spread that I do and then I type out what everything meant and then I email that back to you and then that's your email reading. So go to the community tab if you need an example on that. And those are $20 per question. So you email me your question. I don't need to know a whole lot, but if you want to give more information, that's fine. Because it will just make it clearer when I try to explain it back to you what I saw. And maybe I saw this because of when you said da 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 So there's that. Um... Private readings via Skype. I have not hooked it up yet, but we can start scheduling those uh, today. We're going forward for next week, but if you want to schedule one for next week, go ahead. Uh, they're $50 for a Skype reading. It's $20 for an email reading. And the Skype readings are 30 minutes. That does not include me shuffling because you know I'm going to shuffle. <laughs> There's a 30 minute reading on Skype. That's $50. The $20 is for the email reading. The sessions for tarot classes is 30 minutes to an hour. And that is $60 for 30 minutes, $100 for an hour. Or you just subscribe to Patreon and then you just see them all for one fee. But like I said, if you want the back and forth, if you want the questions to be answered as we're doing it, then you do that with your session. But like I said, you can just wait for the Patreon video because it's going to come out. The Patreon, I don't know how the tiers work. So I don't know how much that's going to cost because I have to pay for a Patreon. So there is still that whole thing. And they do take, I think, 8% of what you make for their fee. And so you have to factor that in too. So I don't have any prices for the Patreon yet. I still haven't set it up. I still haven't made any videos for it, but that's coming too. Because now today I got my teaching deck. So, and I'm actually going to, you know, I don't read the books. I'm going to read this one. Actually, not going to read that one. I'm going to read this one. It's the same. But um, it's, I guess the upright reversed. I don't do reversed cards. So keep that in mind, too, when we do the lessons. Um, but if I have to, if you really want to know what it means, it is in here, and we can look it up together.
but I don't really do reversed cards because I just don't think it's necessary. Now, mind you, I watch people do reverse cards and I think it's fascinating, but I just don't do it. Life's confusing enough. Don't confuse me. No more. I just don't like the back of those cards. Looks like some old quilt. Anyway. So that's the update on that there. And I have all the free time in the world now. So we are going to do some private readings. Like I said, if you want one via Skype, $50 or $60 or whatever I said. <laughs> um, $50 for your private reading. So just email me at tarosapprentice at gmail.com for your own private reading. They are private. They are never, ever recorded, nor are they shared with anybody. So if you want me to send your reading to someone, I'm still not doing it. You send it to them if you want to. So that's that. And if I have something else to add, I will come back on and add it. Bye-bye.